The thing that sometimes throws us back is the uh, the ask for RT for a neb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we actually have him have a neb to start out with that he's getting a neb and he gets worse. Okay. So we'll use our saline bullets okay. um, for a nebulizer. Responding at all? Lip, uh, what am I seeing? We have a good IV that's running here. Yes, we have a good IV going. Good. Let's drop some okay. Thank you too. We're going to this one with uh, okay. do you want Connor here. Well, yeah, she's got a 94, 97. Thank you. Can we start bagging? So start yeah. bagging. Yeah. The pulse is at heart rate's down to 98. So this, is a, this sounds like an RSV patient on uh -huh. epinephrine. Looks like maybe a pneumonia over there. Okay. I don't, I don't feel a pulse, guys. Well, right now we're trying to support the ability to breathe, so we don't feel a pulse. Is he breathing? I don't feel a pulse. What's going on? He's not, he doesn't have a heart rate. Someone grab the board, please. I don't know. I don't know. Have a pulse we have a social worker here that can help out with mom. Yeah, why don't you come over here, mom, as a social worker. I'm going to talk to you about what's going on here. Wonderful. Okay. We're going to do a social worker, right? Oh, there you go. Are we ready to intubate? Let's do 0.1 of epi. We're giving one mil of epi. That's correct. Doc, we got the ventilator in the back. Yeah, we got the ventilator in the back. Yeah, we got the pads on the chest. We're getting them set up here. Epi's in. Okay. Have to be not eligible for this baby's weight. This baby is 11 kilos. Per kilo. It's going to be 0.02 per kilo. So it's going to be. Let's do. Let's do point one of the epi and point two of the atropine. Let's break down. Do you need a break, Jen? Apply pads. Check connection. Are those old pads on that baby? When was the last time we gave the epi? Let's put some new pads on. Okay. Continue chest compressions, please. Can you bagging? Have we got a glucose yet? How long since the first round of that? Five hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. Hey, Brian, can you pull up another glucose bag? Okay. Are you ready? Okay. We're charging. Hit ten joules. Everyone clear. Clear. Go ahead and check in the shot. Okay. Every. I'm clear. You're clear. Everyone's clear. All right. Okay. Looks like we got a slow rhythm again. Slow rhythm. When was our last epi? Two minutes ago. Right. Two minutes ago. Right. Should Should we, get we drop some more epinephrine. We also get bicarb. We're good. We're good. One times five. Five mil equivalents of our bicarb, please. Like and more atropine's on up and ready to be given. Let's do a rhythm check and see what we feel for. When we get any pulses. This here. I do have right a pulse. Right here. Do you feel so we pulse? have a pulse. Okay. What's our pulse right now? Are we ready to intubate? Yep. Yeah. Do we have anything else here to go on you? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Blood pressure is 63 over 45. Oh, yeah, he's taking it again. Heart rate, good pulse ox. Just take your time. Okay, let me listen. Did we go through all of our H's and T's? We've not. So it looks like we're back. We're in a normal rhythm again. Yeah, color change. That's yeah. not. Anything else we're not thinking of that people uh, are thinking? Yeah, it's kind of sad. It's 90, 91, 56, that we give her a bolus. Yeah, and we get a repeat ABG. Right now, as well, while we got a pulse. Breast sound, uh, she sounds really coarse. Okay. You could give her, um, give her something, uh, yeah, just, and just do another uh, blood gases. Right away, uh, bagging right now. About 30. 30, that's a good rate. Let's keep it there. You can stop bagging. All right, good job. We'll stop right there. I think we're good. Everybody was very responsive and very helpful and, and good ideas. I heard good ideas coming from everybody. One thing that I really liked about this room was it wasn't noisy. Not everybody was yelling. That's so unlike most codes, right? Everybody's yelling and screaming and people were listening and communicating and good input from everybody. It was really nice. They kind of sensed that a lot of the equipment that we need often doesn't work the first time. Like one of those stylets has a, a lowered bulb. We had a hard time with the pads being placed initially and that's very realistic. That's how it goes almost every time that you have equipment failures, so everybody seemed to be able to jump on and fix those problems uh, readily. It was nice. So I think overall you guys did a very good job of communicating, closing the loop when you had the medications, someone's announcing yourself, someone said I'm recording uh, in, the, in the different jobs. I think that, that's when you come to the code, always announce yourself that you're coming in. Uh, so when pharmacy arrives, say pharmacy's here, that way the person running the code knows who do you have available. I think you guys sort of fell into your roles, RT was doing the bagging. You always tend to go a little bit faster, especially for a code, so that's the one thing try to keep in mind when the, looking at the rate, and I think you guys were doing a good job trying to coordinate it with compressions. Um, I think everybody sort of fell into the roles. You had someone administering meds, someone was doing compression, someone had the airway, someone was running the code. If you're running the code, the one thing I'll you try, do, try not to do anything. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna run the code, give Ryan the intubation, or, or let Ryan take over running the code, because you wanna be able to be the person that sits back, especially when you have enough people, because when you're intubating, then you sort of lose track of medications, of time, because you're, you're focused on that one. So if you have plenty of help and you're running the code, assign roles uh, for that. So there were, you had a lot of help, you had RTs here, you had pharmacy here. How did you get everybody here, Pharmacy was here initially, and then there was a whole bunch of other people that here, and we, excuse me, respiratory was here initially, and we called for uh, right. the so pharmacy. Right, so I had another here. nurse to, uh, we called the yes. code, and then we had another nurse to get. Right. I would just say from a standpoint of, Clarity when, when that heavy drip issue came up. Uh -huh. you know, let's think about getting an heavy drip. Let's get an heavy drip ready. What dose are we going to do? And the miscommunication going on, so we probably could have done a better job being yeah. clever yeah, with yeah. regards that to that. Little. There was an error on our code sheet that didn't mention the uh, atropine volume dose to be administered. Yeah. Generally, my first concern is to get weight. Mm -hmm. Once I know weight, I start prepping with the standard medications that we were using, epi and atropine. By the time I got here, the epi had already been ordered. Dave was already working on it. Um, RT folks were here as well, and how did you guys think everything went? You were the one that was here initially. I, I think it went good. I think the communication for me was good from the doctor. And we had some help with, with mom. Um, it was good. She grabbed my arm. Yeah. How yeah. do you think nice. things went? I mean, this is something that is this realistic or? Yeah, when I came in, mom was already here. I asked her if she wanted to stay and she wanted to be able to see her baby and what was happening. When you went to intubate, sometimes that's really uncomfortable for parents to see that. So I made sure she knew what intubation was, made sure whether or not she wanted to see that, and she did. Um, so my role was just to stay here and support her. And she was managing herself well. She was a resource to the team with information. She wasn't a distraction or getting in the way, so she was good. We like having parents here if they can handle it and not distract the team because then they have no doubt that everything was being done that could be done to help their child. And I also noticed that you know you asked everybody what they thought. You wanted to you know ask you wanted to get everybody's input, and um, that's important. An important part of codes and communication is to make everybody feel empowered to speak up. And um, if they see something that that you're not seeing, you ask them, and you know, they were able to, to give their input. So I thought that was really really helpful. And knowledge sharing, which you know, John talks a lot about. You know, we want to empower everyone. You can bring anything to the to the code. So if you see something that needs to be done, share that knowledge. And then you ask him for it, sort of empowers everyone to say, "Oh yeah, I can see that. Maybe we should feel for a pulse. Maybe we should. And someone can come up with those and help you in that."